About 1926, a gentleman named uh, uh, Thomas Campbell uh, began to lease land to the city of St. Petersburg. And the idea of it was to create a park setting uh, for African Americans. So the city leased it for a number of years, and I think it was about 1943 that the city actually uh, uh, bought this land. Campbell Park became the site of all kinds of community activities. Uh, it, uh, we're talking athletic events. The Gibbs Gla Gladiators, for example, played their football games there. Uh, there were Negro League baseball games played there. Uh, I think that there may have even been the pleading of the Maypole when, as yeah. you mentioned earlier, took place at Campbell Park. Our dad played baseball during the, early, the late 30s and early 40s, 1938 to 1942. Uh, we weren't born then, so everything we learned, we learned either after our dad's death or in the later years or latter years of our father's life. And uh, daddy was known as a utilities man. The utilities man basically played all areas or facets of baseball from what I can understand. And he played, uh, his contracts were all drawn up under Sid Pollock of the Pollock family. He played with the Cincinnati Clowns, um, Negro League, various aspects of the Negro League, uh, played around the country. And he also played, got a chance to play in Havana, Cuba. A lot of times, um when dad would be talking with some of his friends, I remember him talking about when he play, played uh, in Campbell Park. Well, you know, you're doing something and during that time, you know, kids were uh, seen but not heard. But, you know, you sit and you do your coloring and you just kind of listen. And he talked a lot about the people that uh, he played with, uh, Mr. Oliver, uh, back in, in those days. Daddy spent a lot of time away. They traveled by bus. And oddly enough, when they were here, Daddy had a home to go to. But many of the, the Negro League players later ended up staying in my late husband's accommodation uh, that only the Negro League could stay in. And my late husband was uh, Robert Swain. And he housed the Negro League baseball players. Well, one of the things we want to say uh, too about Campbell Park is that uh, there was a, a performance by Ray Charles in that outdoor arena and some people say about 3,000 people attended. But the dairy farm was across 16th Street from Campbell Park um, and that was actually the home of the Immaculate Conception Catholic School which was the black Catholic school. It was started in I guess about the early 1950s. The first graduating class which would have been eighth grade, was in 1959. And that was only three students that graduated. That was Barbara Wimbish, um, Donna LaCroix, and Gwendolyn Wilson. Okay, they were only three, and it was only girls that uh, were the first graduating class. And so people like um, Senator Darrell Roussan, attended school there. Irene Pridgen, who served on our committee, and her father was the first black realtor in, in St. Petersburg, attended school there. Uh, Doug Jamerson, who became our first state representative, attended Immaculate Conception. And it was right next door to 16th Street Junior High and Elementary. The first Thanks principal was Mother Eileen, and uh, her mm -hmm. assistant principal was Sister Elizabeth Ann. And they were of the Franciscan nuns. They were Franciscan nuns. And they were the best teachers that any student could have ever hoped for. Strict. We never did know what not doing homework or we didn't know the meaning of that. And Sister Elizabeth Ann, oh, you would have to have met her to believe her. So many people were Catholic, uh, you know, with white businesses and stuff. So she called up um, Howard Johnson, the manager at Howard Johnson, and she says, okay, um, I'm with whatever, St. Paul's Immaculate Conception, and we're about to bring some of my students out there for lunch, you know? So I said, oh, okay, okay, sister, no problem, no problem. And then she would show up with all of us. Black kids. With all these <laughs> black kids, and they, 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 it was a frenzy. 
But since he had told her to bring us, they went, around, they went ahead and seated us. And when she walked us in, she started naming her students as if to say, these are my students, they are children, they're human beings, you know, and they will be seated. They could not turn a nun down because they thought that they would go to hell, if, you know. Uh, so they would never tell a nun no. Yeah, they were Catholic, so they would let all of us in, 35 of us, to any six-gun territory, silver mermaids, anywhere uh, activity, and ex expose us to uh, the finer things in life. It made a difference. We had the best education of any black students could have had, you know, during that period of time.